everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of Sika Mentor podcast series. Um, and we talk about uh, product management in general uh, and for the budding product managers as well, if they want to build their career into the space, how they can move forward, etc. And everything related to product management. We have uh, Pratham Nawal with us, uh, bringing more than five years of experience into product management and data science. It's a pleasure to have you with us, uh, Pratham. Uh, uh, thank you for joining us. So let, let's start with introductions first. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you, uh, Zoe, for the introduction. I think you have already started that. Yes, I am a product manager uh, with five years of experience. I graduated from NSIT Delhi in 2019 as a manufacturing process and automation engineer. Uh -huh. So simplify, I'm a mechanical engineer. And I started uh, working full-time as a data scientist. I had a short stint working for a company called Quantify Analytics based out of Mumbai. Mm -hmm. Post that, I switched to product management. Then I worked for a fintech startup for over three years. Uh, started there as a APM and eventually uh, got promoted to product manager, where I <clears throat> worked close, closely on the customer experience part of it, the setting up a new community, which is uh, the growth part of uh, growth stage of a product and eventually I moved to KYC and compliance there. Then in the last one and a half years, I switched uh, from B2C product management to B2B e-commerce product manager. So mm -hmm. where I worked closely to solve for RTO problem, which is a pro which is a common pain point across uh, e-commerce, uh, D2C merchants, etc. So there I worked as a B2B product manager. Yep. Great. Great, great to know that you have good experience into B2C and B2B uh, you know, both kind of uh, domains. So, so I mean, given that you have a diverse background, uh, what uh, do you think, you know, has prepared you well for a product manager role, uh, working with a startup uh, as well, right? So uh, what do you think about that? So um, my journey to start, like my journey around product management started itself when I started working as a data scientist. It was a very small team within Quantify working towards making a B2B product uh, in the media industry. As we were a small team, so I got a chance to work closely with the product owner or a product manager on that team. Hmm. I understood what part I am I playing as a data scientist in that uh, in the whole ecosystem and what hmm. part is being played by the product manager. Hmm. So we discussed at length of what are the challenges that a consumer is facing. So those types of insights were brought in. And uh, and few bit uh, and then I referred to few resources because this triggered my interest. Okay, there is something outside the entire uh, problems, uh, the entire development pipeline, data science pipeline that I'm working on, and that may have a bigger impact, or slightly better, or uh, slightly end to end picture, uh, better end to end picture, the in the entire life cycle of a consumer. So I thought this intrigued my interest, and I started uh, working around, like basically preparing myself for entry level roles. Uh, as a product, yeah. Great, great. And and how do you think uh, if uh, any of uh, budding product manager wants to prepare for uh, you know startup or or, or joining this this uh, product management space, then uh, how can they prepare for a unique challenges which you have faced right in your experience, uh, and that would come handy for them to know about. So, uh, any any thoughts on that? Sure, definitely. So uh, any any budding uh, guy who wants to be a product manager or an entry level PM, so mm -hmm. the expectations from an entry level PM are slightly different uh, than a seasoned PM, where you're supposed to have a good product mindset, execution skills. Uh, at the same time, while one can develop those, uh, when one can start referring to a few known books like tracking the product. These are two good, good books to have, but I would recommend getting uh, like being involved in few mock-up interviews or mm -hmm. like building that product mindset by working, uh, like basically make a peer group. This is what I did. So I basically, uh, in within Quantify, we, have, we used to have a very small peer group where we used yeah. to discuss, okay, let's take a simple example of this software, popular product, and uh, let's try and understand how this product can be iterated to the persona that we know. Or as simple as you have a pen, you have a, have a hardware product within a house, take up that pen, take up that bottle and then try to understand that, okay, how this bottle can be, uh, how this bottle can be redesigned or improved to get a better experience uh, for yeah. the consumer. So that 
it's that itself helps uh, and when you especially when you put things in writing that clarifies a lot that puts you in that uh, thought process okay now you are thinking deeply about the consumer and its problems so that itself helps uh, getting that interview getting the, like helping you answer questions in a structured manner and that is all about uh, making a product like building that product mindset yeah yeah sure that's that's really helpful and uh, and what strategies do you use uh, as a product manager to stay agile and adaptable in a fast paced startup setting specifically as a product manager you have to embrace that there is going to be ambiguity and it is mm. your job to basically make a path uh, towards the like to bring that problem to a conclusion uh, in that ambiguity at the same mm. time you have you you can take help from your managers your peers to yeah. understand from them what is their opinion so as an early pm or a pm in a like with 2 to 4 years of experience it is very important to take in feedback from your stakeholders while you you uh, end up making decisions but it is very important to cordially be in that space where you're communicating effectively uh, to mm. your stakeholders to your peers and get feedback so that yeah. feedback cycle helps you improve uh, in that um, in that ambiguity of a, that a startup brings makes sense makes sense and as you have worked in both large organizations and in in startups as well the other question which which i can thought of is yeah you know how do the responsibilities of a product manager in your experience you know differ when you are working with a large company vis-a-vis -a, -vis a startup hmm. sure so uh, i mean the product manager in a small startup or a big company the core responsibilities around product problem solving like doing the problem discovery making yeah. a plan uh, like making being uh, participating in the product roadmap discussions uh, mm -hmm. setting a product strategy remains constant what yeah. changes uh, with scale or with say in a big tech is the complexity and basically you have to solve for scale i'll give an example for example when we were work, like when we were working uh, with a very small team and uh, the you can say a scale of uh, lakhs or thousands of users you basically uh, start with a poc a very loose end poc and then you build uh, you basically work with your closely with your engineers with your ems with your senior product leaders to build a poc that is that works only at that scale because at this stage you have to solve for the speed of development you have to uh, quickly iterate as mvp that can validate whether you are working on the right your solution is validating the problem or not and eventually yeah. as you see the adoption coming in you solve uh, the other parts of uh, like basically what it requires for this product to scale So let's say lakhs of users, thousands of users on a daily basis. How to mention? How to make sure the latency is uh, like uh, within the limits? So that is something that is different. And with when you are working on a big tech, you take that uh, take that feedback or take that input as an input from day one itself. You know your your product is going to touch uh, lakhs of users or crores of users. So you take mm -hmm. factoring that uh, problem statement uh, as a constraint from day one itself. that is one having said that you have uh, a limited budget or timelines to work in a startup the timeline piece uh, slightly uh, uh, like timelines and the budget slightly varies in a large scale where you have uh, the sops and the teams slightly more structured so you can hmm. take help from those teams to let's say facilitate your problem discovery parts whereas in a small uh, small startup you are the owner of problem discovery and then sometimes you also end up being the customer support guy so yeah. yeah the whole idea is to fall in love with the problem statement uh, as a product guy whether you are working in a big tech or uh, in a startup makes sense makes sense yeah yeah so uh, the next one is uh, which i can think of is uh, you know how does the decision making process in a startup uh, <clears throat> you know differs from compared to a large corporation right if you are working in is there any difference when you make a decisions because the dynamics of the company teams etc you know though that would differ right obviously uh well there are uh, the chunks of the, so there are a lot of decisions that you make on when you are uh, picking up a goal uh, and then there are decisions that you take when you are conceptualizing or launching a solution so when you take up a goal each uh, in a small startup you are working on a slightly on a larger piece of chunk you are owner of the entire product suit uh, maybe mm -hmm. a one product line etc uh however uh, when you are taking up a goal 
uh, in a big tech you either you understand what types of goals have been taken cross spot and that that decision itself uh, would help you understand okay what are the uh, what are the what is my niche what is something very where, where is something that i have to move the needle and when you are conceptualizing a solution in big tech you have to understand that your solutions may or may not impact the other teams as well so it is very important to get stakeholder alignment from cross spots from other development uh, other mm-hmm. teams etc so that is that becomes very handy whereas uh, generally speaking in a small startup you are uh, practically driving your product end to end and uh, there are slightly lesser chances of your product uh, obviously you have internal stakeholders within your team itself you have compliance you have marketing you have sales uh, in case of a b2b setup and you have customer support right itself so in those touch points you have to understand that your solution has to be uh, basically basically a trade off between good customer experience and obviously not increasing the operational uh, responsibility of your team at least yeah. uh, that is something uh, that is different uh, in both the spaces however at the same time uh, good communication and stakeholder alignment is something that is like a mandatory in both on both the uh, in both the scenarios so mm. uh, one thing that has helped in that part is being a good uh, be very good at writing and summarizing things so when you are uh, like basically a product manager who is uh, solving for the problem is thinking on his own is with peers it is very important to write things down i prefer my own diary and my pen uh, but then uh, at, it helps me put it it brings clarity of thought when i'm talking to stakeholders and as you grow as a product manager uh, whether it's a big tech or a small startup you learn the art of summarizing things for them yeah. so you are saving everybody's time and ensuring that everybody is helping the customer win so that is uh, the goal yeah no that's 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 completely right uh, uh, you know um and and you know another aspect which comes to my mind is uh, we know that there are products in a startup uh, where you are building from 0 to 1 or launching that product right whereas there is a case of growing that product right which is already launched and and in those cases so i'm focusing on the latter part uh you know in your experience what are the unique challenges which are faced by product managers when they are growing a product or a product is in the growth phase so <clears throat> when you are uh, so when you are working on you have picked up a pro- charter or a product which is already has achieved at least some scale and it has solved that initial uh, it has it is solving a problem for a consumer set you have hmm. to uh, closely understand that how it is working like as a product guy you have to first understand your product in and out that means you hmm. need to speak to how like how many users are imp- getting impacted on a day to day basis on that only that how a product manager can manage the risks and uncertainties when developing a product in its early stages so if you if you have experience into that that would be really helpful oh yes so uh, like in both b2c and b2b uh, we are always expected to uh, run multiple pocs and uh, eventually you set up uh, like basically early stage milestones that my poc would be about uh, like basically this new hypothesis that could eventually bring in more money or uh, bring in the scale so those types of pocs and milestones would uh, are typically expected out of a product manager and as com- coming to the risk part of uh, running a poc or a early stage product it is very important to do a self risk assessment okay this product or this poc has uh, like basically the good part of this poc is that if this works this is how it going it is going to bring the scale or it is going to solve the problem having said that the risk could be different this could be around the budget that we have to play with this could be around the product the competitor product the feature that they already have so you may be asked that okay the competitor has a this feature now you have to evaluate that this requires significant development how do we arrive at a path and validate and uh, that whether this feature would be required or not so you do a self risk assessment okay this is how consumer is uh, working like this is how consumer is using your product and if this feature is added what type of problems would it solve can the mm-hmm. consumer live with it can the consumer not live with it is there a delight moment that can be added so you do a risk analysis communicate with your stakeholders that this is uh, what is uh, this is where the gap is and uh, if we bring in this feature these are the delight moments that we can add to a consumer life cycle but having said that these are the risks so you communicate your risk across the stakeholders effectively 
get in their feedback because outside the product there may be levers that your stakeholders can bring in provide you with inputs that may uh, that might be a win philosophy at the same time when you are communicating your risk proactively you also are working with the team who is actually making sure your product eventually wins comes out of that risk effectively so it is very important to do a risk assessment it is important to communicate the risk involved and uh, like what is your backup plan if this hypothesis doesn't work what is your plan b how do we make sure you're getting that customer from uh, like basically in case of a competitor product and eventually how do we monitor that risk like how at what point do we say that risk is contained and at what point do we say that risk is still there uh, within the product yeah, yeah. that is uh, what works uh, yeah so that that's a, that's a clear strategy and i think that works well in in the real time environment so so my last last question to you is any suggestions or advice for the budding product managers who want to build their career into the space of product management uh, any advice you want to give it to them that would be helpful for them uh so my first advice would be fall in love with the problem not with your product because uh, the few of the mistakes that i did as a uh, early pm or what i also foreseen uh, other pms is that they eventually uh, basically fall in love with their own product or feature that this is going to impact etc so as a pm you are owner of the problem statement not owner of your absolutely your product is a solution so you have mm-hmm. to understand when do you pull in and pull out your product because that is also a skill that is expected out of you you have to yeah. move, move the needle and that comes Uh, that comes uh, with the mindset that okay i have to move solve for the customer not for the like basically not have to keep on uh, making v2 v3s for my product even if it doesn't work in v1 you have to understand what works and what doesn't work that is one part and uh, when coming to uh, budding pm budding pms uh, most of the resources uh, most of the pms stories that we have in the market are around big tech pms so mm-hmm. it is very important to understand that why you as a as a case study you might work on product manager at instagram but it is very important to understand what type of problem statements what type of what is a life like for a product manager at a startup so talk to your seniors if possible there is a good network that we have at seeker mentor so you can reach out to us you can get in touch with few fellow pms to understand how it works and uh, like one practice that i followed uh, was to read the blogs of uh, big startup like startups like swiggy mintra that does help me understand that how a big problem statement can be broken down into small chunks and how you can involve an entire team to solve a problem statement mm-hmm. uh, so you may not work on all types of products but it is definitely helpful to understand uh, how problem solving uh, can be done in different ways yeah. that is one and uh, one habit that uh, that has helped me personally in, as a product guy is to write write as much as possible right in an elaborate manner for yourself what do you think about the problem what do you think about the solution to do as much as whiteboarding with your manager with your peers or with yourself and also as you as you learn and grow learn to summarize and be very concise with your information because you as a product guy you have to talk to stakeholders and you have to value their data if you want a win win for your customers and for yourself and be very uh, like be very very open to feed feedback because you are going to make a lot of mistakes it is very important uh, to be humble and to be uh, like to open to feedback as a product guy yeah yeah completely i think i i would also agree with you that you know focus more on the problem statement you know get in love uh, with the problem itself right rather than the solution so so yeah and and feedback is yes most important from your customers from your stakeholders right so that that always bring gives you that gives you that perspective that okay you know whether to change or pivot your strategy accordingly right so so completely yeah. and and uh, um so thank you so much uh, pratham you know for your time and and insights about product management and how one can uh, you know build their career into product management space uh, really enjoyed talking to you and and uh, and yeah i think uh, uh, you know you're doing already so well i wish you all the best and uh, and and i'll ask my subscribers to uh, you know subscribe or share this and like as well with respect to this video and 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 follow the see commenter youtube channel instagram channel etc as well so so thank you so much pratham i think